When talking about chemical reactions in solution, the components that will be doing the chemistry will be the minority component. For example, for aqueous solutions, anything dissolved in water will be the minority component. It is important to know the chemical potential of these minority components in solution so that we can calculate what processes are spontaneous. Henry's law allows us to quantify the chemical potential of the dilute component of a solution based on the vapor pressure. Starting from pure components, this time denoted by a dagger, and assuming that the vapor and liquid phase are at equilibrium, then the chemical potential of component J in the liquid phase is equal to the chemical potential of the component J in the gaseous phase, and that's equal to the standard chemical potential of component J in the gaseous phase plus RT times the natural logarithm of Henry's constant of component J divided by the standard partial pressure. Recall that previously the natural logarithm term here had the partial pressure of the pure component when we were talking about Raoult's law. Now, since we're talking about dilute solutes, the pure component has a partial pressure equal to Henry's constant, and that's why it's written in here now. Rearranging this to solve for the standard chemical potential gives the standard chemical potential of component J is equal to the chemical potential of the pure component J in, as a liquid minus RT times the natural logarithm of Henry's constant of component J divided by the standard partial pressure. Now for each component in a binary mixture, as we vary the mole fraction, then the standard or the chemical potential of component J of the liquid is equal to the chemical potential of component J of the gas, and that's equal to the standard chemical potential of component J in the gas phase plus RT times the natural logarithm of the partial pressure of J divided by the standard um, pressure. And in this case, we use the partial pressure of J because we were measuring the actual partial pressure at a specific mole fraction. Since the standard chemical potential is the same in both cases, for the pure and mixed case, we can then substitute it together to get the chemical potential of component J in the liquid phase is equal to the chemical potential of component J of the pure liquid phase minus RT times the natural logarithm of Henry's constant of component J divided by the standard pressure plus RT times the natural logarithm of the partial pressure of component J divided by the standard pressure. According to Henry's law, we can then substitute in for the partial pressure of component J is equal to the activity of component J times Henry's constant for component J. Substituting in Henry's law for the partial pressure of component J gives the chemical potential of component J of the liquid phase is equal to the chemical potential of component J of the pure liquid minus RT times the natural logarithm of Henry's constant for component J divided by the standard pressure plus RT times the natural logarithm of the activity of component J times Henry's constant of component J divided by the standard partial pressure. What we can then do is we can separate the second natural logarithm term into two terms, and then we can cancel out the equivalent terms, being the RT times the natural logarithm of Henry's constant of component J divided by the standard partial pressure. And what that gives in the end is the chemical potential of component J of the liquid phase is equal to the chemical potential of component J of the pure liquid phase plus RT times the natural logarithm of the activity of component J. We've now introduced two definitions of the chemical potential of pure component J, mu star and mu dagger. The figure on the left is an illustration meant to show the difference between mu star and mu dagger. Mu star is the chemical potential that assumes that the pressure of the pure component is P star, which is the actual partial pressure of the pure substance. Looking at component B as an example, the dashed line represents Raoult's law, which uses the partial pressure of B star as its reference. The dashed line only follows the black line, the actual partial pressure, for high mole fractions of B. Mu dagger is the chemical potential that assumes that Henry's law constant is the pressure of the pure component. This is an unphysical value. However, the point is that Henry's law fits the, the filled-in black curve when B is the minority component. Since the standard state simply represents the value for a different set of conditions, it's all right to have Raoult's law standard state and a Henry's law standard state. Moving forward, we will write the standard chemical potential in reference to the Henry's law standard chemical potential for dilute components. This means that the chemical potential of component J in the liquid phase is equal to the standard chemical potential of component J in the liquid phase plus RT times the natural logarithm of the activity of component J. 
since the standard state is defined with Henry's law constants, we can use the constant that relates partial pressure to molality instead of mole fraction. It is convenient to define the activity using molality since that is much more convenient and relatable when discussing dilute components in aqueous solutions. So the activity of component J can be expressed as the activity coefficient times the molality divided by the standard molality being equal to one kilogram per mole. Here is a summary of this lecture. The molar Gibbs free energy of each component of a multi-component system is quantified by the chemical potential mu. When calculating the chemical potential under certain conditions, we calculate the deviation from a reference or standard chemical potential of that component. Raoult's law defines the partial pressure of components in ideal mixtures as the partial pressure of component J is equal to the mole fraction of component J times the partial pressure of, of the pure component J. And Henry's law defines the partial pressure of dilute components in real mixtures as the partial pressure of component J is equal to the mole fraction of component J times Henry's constant. Since both Raoult's law and Henry's law are linear extrapolations in pure and dilute situations, to account for the real nature of mixtures, we use activities instead of mole fractions. And this is defined as the activity of component J is equal to the activity coefficient of component J times the mole fraction of component J. And for dilute components, the Henry's law constant that relates molality to partial pressure means that the chemical potential can be defined using activities where the activity of component J is equal to the activity coefficient times the molality divided by the standard molality.